Bruce Knight, former chief of uh, the Natural Resources Conservation Service, principal and founder of Strategic Conservation Solutions, talking today a little bit about some of the conservation offerings from the uh, latest Farm Bill. One of the most exciting new programs is the RCPP, the Regional Conservation Partnership Program. Uh, this was born out of a desire to really be able to leverage some of the interest from the conservation community, from the NGOs, the non-governmental organizations that have been wanting to create new conservation out there on the ground. Congress gave them the opportunity to come to the table with their own financial resources, leverage that against the financial resources being offered by USDA in a flexible, innovative way. So what is occurring is that there will be tens of millions of dollars offered each year for these sorts of partnerships. Maybe with NGOs, maybe with conservation districts, can even be trade associations such as, uh, as uh, the national or state cotton organizations, each with an opportunity to join together to provide innovative partnerships on delivery of conservation. So, so what's that really mean? It means that that partnership can scoop up work that used to be done with EQIP or would be offered with the Conservation Security Program and Conservation Stewardship Program and bring those together in innovative partnerships for delivering conservation. So if you're working on a particular watershed and you're wanting to clean up the Sacramento Bay, you can put together a partnership about how to do that in a common sense way with Bay Area farmers. If, on the other hand, you're wanting to reduce the drawdown of the Flint River in uh, Georgia and create irrigation efficiency measures, you're going to be able to build that out in a partnership to be able to deliver those so same sort of things. The desire here is to unleash that collaborative, cooperative effort on conservation in every community where there's a desire to be able to do that, to put more conservation on the ground, but do it in a common sense manner that has farmers, ranchers, and the conservation community all at the table leveraging these resources offered by USDA. As we speak, the jury's still out on how NRCS is fully going to implement the RCPP program. In 2014, they opened it up. There was a huge offering of proposals. They accepted those proposals, and as we go into the end of 2014 and the beginning of 2015, we're expecting uh, decisions from USDA shortly that will help us have an understanding of whether they prefer large projects or small projects, multiple stakeholders, whether it's innovative ideas or innovative delivery. What it appears thus far is there's a greater emphasis on innovative delivery than innovative ideas. And one of the reasons that I'm able to draw this conclusion is that there is another program that stands beside RCPP called the Conservation Innovation Grants Program that is targeted specifically at innovative products and new ideas. And so NRCS is probably going to steer more of the innovative products and new ideas that need to be tested in the Conservation Innovation Grants and the opportunities for innovative and creative delivery more to the RCPP program. But it isn't until we really get into the implementation of these two programs and we see how they stand up alongside each other that we're going to really be able to tell exactly how USDA is going to be implementing these. But for the average producer that's interested in participating in one of these collaborative partnerships, whether it's innovative delivery or innovative ideas, there's two programs, each with opportunities for that producer and their partners to enroll in and to be active in. This gives us a level of flexibility in conservation that is very much unprecedented and very much long overdue. It's a little interesting in RCPP because you've got in the Conservation Security Program or Conservation Stewardship Program a uh, $200,000 payment limit over the life of the Farm Bill. And under EQIP, there is a $450,000 payment limit. And under RCPP, there is the ability to, in those programs, to go beyond those payment limits. Now, how that's going to get actually worked out in practice 
if those upper, upper hand payment limits are in fact tested, remain to be seen on how much NRCS is going to give a collaborative partnership, the ability to do that. But that could be very important as we look at how to really bring some of these things to scale on a farm operation. We're talking about a significant amount of new federal dollars out there for a conservation program. Uh, in any, any given year, it looks like there's going to be at least $100 million available nationally, regionally, and at the local level for various priorities out there for conservation partnerships and partnership delivery. What really makes this a great leverage here is that the partners, the, pro, the folks that are pro applying for it, uh, can't receive a, a single red cent for administrative costs or for overhead costs. They're going to have to come up with that as they provide for the additional conservation efforts that are out there. So this is significant and it's going to be a real opportunity as we look at how to address each of those efforts. There's a number of interesting questions that are starting to be raised about how the various provisions and flexibilities of RCPP would be utilized. One of the first questions that comes to mind for many folks is if I'm already participating in, in CSP or in EQIP, can I participate in RCPP as well? And the, uh, the, the intent of the answer is certainly to be yes. Um, it is certainly to be able to provide a person another opportunity to deliver conservation. Now, there's a great deal of flexibility that has been built into the program to be able to provide flexibility on things like payment limits and on contract parameters because of the need to be able to bring these together. What, what is less certain is how that will actually go. Uh, an RCPP proposal that would be intended to certainly simply circumvent the payment limits is probably not an RCPP proposal that's going to be accepted. However, one that says we have some producers that are bumping up against payment limits with existing CSP or EQIP contracts and we need flexibility in being able to fully implement the RCPP and need a waiver for being able to exceed those payment limits, that may very well be a viable option. However, as we go into the end of 2014 and the beginning of 2015, how NRCS will actually implement that scenario remains uncertain. So as a producer, how do you get involved in an RCPP project? Um, chances are the best opportunities are going to be to be involved in the original application and the original proposal. However, as I have myself reviewed some of the initial proposals that were seeking funding, many of those will actually have an outreach component in the given community. So in those cases, there's going to be workshops, outreach, sign-ups run by the partnership that submitted the RCPP in conjunction with the local NRCS office because the NRCS is still going to have to be involved in that. Plug into the conservation community in your local area. Conservation districts, your NRCS office, your cotton organization, any of those may be able to provide answers of what are the opportunities that are going to be out there with either a RCPP proposal that has been accepted or an RCPP proposal that is being developed for future applications. Thank you.